Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the GTX 650 Ti was launched in October of 2012 and was available in one or two gigabyte variants. At $150 or £125 at the time, it was a compelling option but was overshadowed by AMD's 7850 which by the time of the 650 Ti's release was only a little bit more expensive and offered about 30% more performance. To combat this, the spring of 2013 saw NVIDIA launch the 650 Ti Boost Edition, again in both 1 and 2 GB variants. The 2 GB version, which we'll be focusing on today, cost $169, or just under £145 new, and can be found today from 50 to 100 in both currencies. The EVGA version that we'll be using today cost me £55, roughly $68, and features 2GB of GDDR5 VRAM, 768 CUDA cores, a base clock of 980MHz and a boost clock of 1033MHz. It requires a single 6-pin connector and a 450W power supply. A superclocked version was also available, but didn't offer any significant difference over this standard boost edition. It's the only card to ever be given the TI Boost name. So can it still play games? With support for DX11 there are no limitations here, so let's get into a few titles. Watch Dogs 2 up first and as always we wanted to find a balance between graphical quality and acceptable performance, something that the high preset offered pretty well. At 1080p we saw an average of 42 frames per second over the course of a half hour of gameplay. We'll also be putting the average and minimum frame rates up on screen for lower resolutions too, as seen here. GTA 5 next with the high settings and MSAA off. At 1080p once again we're seeing 45 FPS on average, which is a more than playable experience. There wasn't really any stutter to speak of and our TI boost is making light work of GTA's great looking environments. I did notice some slowdown in the city, slight frame loss as opposed to freezes or stutter though, which is to be expected in the busier areas. Battlefield 1 here again at full HD with the high preset and we saw 57 frames throughout. Battlefield 1 is more CPU intensive than anything and it's nice to see the 650 Ti holding its own with a popular title like this. This is single player footage of course but multiplayer ran almost identically hovering around the high 50s at 1080p. So finally we put CSGO to the test and left the game on its default high settings. CSGO is more about the frame rate than anything according to you seasoned players out there and lower settings as you can imagine will increase the FPS hugely. With our aim and balance of both quality and performance though, you'll see around 130 on average, a great result in my book. So there we have it. If you can get your hands on the 650Ti Boost 2GB at anywhere under £60 or dollars, then I'd say you're getting pretty good performance for your money. Of course, for a little more you could get an RX 460 which is about 40% better, but for an almost 4 year old GPU you could do worse than this. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video today, I hope you've enjoyed it, it feels like it's been ages since we've taken a look back at an old card like this. I hope you enjoyed the video as I say, if you did leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, leave your thoughts on the 650Ti boost down below. And as always, I will see all of you in the next video.